Hello everyone, it's Dr. Casey Patrick again, Assistant Medical Director here at MCHD EMS. Unfortunately back to discuss more COVID-19. Trust me, uh, as much as anyone out there, I wish, wish this was uh, over. I unfortunately was able to see the pandemic from the lens of an ICU physician this weekend working in the ICU here in the county. And honestly, uh, definitely a new and different perspective. I've seen it from the emergency department in, but seeing the patients in congregation as a whole and looking at the level of severity of illness was truly mind boggling. I you know, spent time in the ICU throughout my career and through my training and honestly can tell you, I've never uh, seen, any, seen anything like this from a degree of severity standpoint, as far as the amount of support, the amount of medication, the truly sick uh, COVID pneumonia patients are requiring uh, it's, it's, again, absolutely mind-boggling. I would be remiss if I didn't give a huge shout-out and um, just word of encouragement to all the ICU nurses out there that are absolutely um, doing amazing, amazing work under amazingly stressful situations, just like the emergency room physicians, the emergency room nurses, all the ancillary staff, all the, all the hospital uh, folks within the county are stretching and flexing and uh, doing everything in their power to take care of uh, patients under an under unbelievably stressful uh, situation. Not to mention our MCHD paramedics who are trying to, getting, trying to get folks to the hospital quickly and safely under equally stressful circumstances. So to all the healthcare workers out there, but ICU nurses in, in particular, thank you for what you're doing because it's absolutely amazing. We've had some uh, new questions over the past couple weeks since the last time we talked. First and foremost, uh, masks uh, tend to come up very frequently. There was you know, some new data out of Bangladesh looking at increasing mask usage and how this affects COVID-19 rates. And this was a, a randomized controlled study, which some people uh, like to point out that there's very little mask data for. Well, this was actually really good data. Um, looking at increased mask usage and how this affected COVID-19 rates. And it looked, you know, to boil it down, like a 30% increase in mask usage decreased COVID-19 rates by, by 10%. This was more pronounced in the, in the elderly population, which is reassuring because that's the vulnerable population. Are masks going to eliminate COVID? Absolutely not. But we know uh, that in diseases that are transmitted by aerosols, respiratory diseases like COVID-19, Masks help mitigate, and they're side effect free. They're inexpensive. Uh, to me, it's a no brainer. Uh, you know, schools and kids right now are a huge area of concern. Um, you know, you never know if the uh, counselor or the English teacher or the lunch lady is a patient with a suppressed immune system, say rheumatoid arthritis or cancer chemotherapy or a transplanted organ. Um, so yes, maybe your a uh, 13 year old is young and healthy and will, will kick COVID no problem, but I surely wouldn't want to give it to one of my community members um, unnecessarily. So I'm masking my 13, 15 and 17 year old up for school. Um, they don't love wear a mask any more than I do, um, but they want to be good stewards and, and good community members and try their best to mitigate. So we're all sort of on the same, on the same wave, same wavelength there, you know, man, no mandate needed to do what's right for your neighbor. Um, what about COVID cases in kids? There have been over 2,500 COVID positive cases in kids under 11 in Montgomery County over the past month. Um, that's you know, almost tenfold higher than the previous uh, month high. So COVID-19 is out there in kids. We know that our uh, local children's hospitals are extremely overloaded and stressed, just like the, like the adult emergency departments. Um, you know, average emergency department volume in our children's hospitals, you know, 80 to 90 patients a day were up over 200 uh, this past week for emergency department volume. So uh, that's, that's concerning. Uh, again, space is at a premium. We also have the unfortunate condition where respiratory syncytial virus or RSV is also running uh, quite rampant right now through the pediatric population. This is another respiratory virus that causes pneumonia and respiratory problems in kids. So it's almost a double whammy. So uh, 
please mask your kids for school if they're old enough for the vaccine at urge vaccination, wash hands and avoid those close contact spaces and share the air as much as possible. What about the mu variant? There's been some uh, increasing news, news reports of the mu variant um, in South America and in Japan. And honestly, it's probably too early to tell. Anytime we see mutations, again, we've talked about, it can make the virus worse at replication, which is helpful to us. It can cause no change in their replication, transmissibility, uh, virulence status, and that's a that's a, a no change, or that can make it more transmissible and or more virulent, more severe. And from the Delta standpoint, we know the Delta is more transmissible than the previous variants. We don't know about the mu yet. There's been some reports that potentially it's more immune evasive, but you know, how that's going to affect us here in the United States remains to be seen. I would be cautious and, and probably concerned, but not overly at this point until we have more information and more data. Again, vaccination, social distancing, masking, hand washing, good common sense mitigation are going to help with the Delta, the Mu, or whatever else comes down the line. And lastly, what about the booster dose? What do we know so far? And a lot of this we're learning from, from Israeli data. Uh, we know that a third dose causes a marked increase in antibody immune response, and that's what helps fight the virus. Um, we know that the immunity wanes from the vaccine quickest in older patients, in patients with immunosuppression. So at this point, I think it's safe to say that our older population and our immunosuppressed population need to be first in line for a third dose. They're the most vulnerable because their immunity is waning. Um, I think it's fairly safe to say that the rest of the population will be in line for a third dose at some point uh, this fall, this winter as well. And this shouldn't come as a surprise. Uh, you know, the hepatitis B vaccine is a three dose vaccine. So immune modulation with vaccination depends on how the vaccine works and how the disease progresses uh, hand in hand. And so with increased transmi transmissibility of the Delta variant and more knowledge that we're gaining about the mRNA vaccines, it, it's pretty obvious that we're going to be in line for a third dose at some point this winter. Um, how that's going to happen and, and who needs to be first, I think it's really important that we protect our vulnerable, we protect our sickest, um, so the immunosuppressed and the elderly really need to be first in line there. Then our, you know, then we get to our frontline healthcare workers, and then on down into the the general public. Um, again, as always, we want this to be over more than anything. Uh, we want to keep folks out of the hospital. Uh, as I walked around the intensive care unit this weekend, you know, there were all unvaccinated COVID nineteen patients. So we can get into side arguments over details here and there, but the vaccines, if one thing is abundantly clear without a shadow of a doubt, when you go through the intensive care units in Montgomery County, across America, Los Angeles, New York, Seattle, Texas, Florida, the Midwest, the intensive care units are overwhelmingly filled 90, 95% plus with unvaccinated COVID-19 patients. So what is the, what was the goal of the vaccine? To prevent severe illness and prevent death. It's doing that beautifully. So please, you know, whether you go to the local drugstore, local department store, any of the precincts across the county uh, with, with vaccination sites, it doesn't matter to me. If you've not been vaccinated, please do so. You know, mask up when you're in public. Put a mask on your kids for school. Not expensive, no side effects there. If we can pull that rate down at all, it's going to be a community-wide uh, victory. And we'll be able to keep those intensive care unit beds open for patients with heart attacks and strokes and gastrointestinal bleeds and all the medical problems that we know are happening at the same time as this pandemic spike. Uh, as always, thanks for listening. If you have questions or concerns, please let us know. Podcast at mchd-px.org. Thanks. We'll talk to you again soon.